Last week, I was planning on making two videos, one on Endless Ocean that you can find in the card here, and another on the Nokia Jam, with this week's video being a follow-up with my submission. Unfortunately, making that video took until Thursday, leaving only a couple of days for the Jam. And here's what I ended up with. Here we have a very complex AI routine that consists of moving three NPCs to the left until they hit a certain point, and then to the right. Once they reach the opposite side, they move left again. Yeah, I didn't even get far enough to program in a way to close the game, so now it's just open on this computer until the inevitable heat death of the universe. Or I can just close it in the debugger. So, instead of showing my non-existent entry, I figured I'd take a second to point out some of the entries that I thought did a particularly good job of working within the constraints of the jam and incorporating the theme. The premise of the jam was to create a game that looks as if it could run on the Nokia 3310. This meant that the palette could only consist of two colors, only one sound could be played at a time, no more than 12 buttons could be used, and the resolution had to be 84 by 48. All this while incorporating the theme of on and off. Now, there were 316 games submitted to the jam, so I couldn't play through all of them. But there were a few that stood out to me of the ones I did play. The first game I wanted to bring attention to is Graviton by Dunkel Growl. While there were many entries that implemented the theme of on and off by flipping gravity, Graviton decided to just turn it on and off. What this means from a gameplay standpoint is that the character will continue moving in the same direction until they hit something. The great pixel work, combined with using a common mechanic in an uncommon way, allows Graviton to stand out among the 316 entries. I also wanted to shine a light, wink, on The Lost Path by Opalier. The premise of the game is to take a lantern to all the torches in a level before running to the exit. The game does a fantastic job of utilizing localized lighting to build tension and has a useful interface that shows how many lanterns are left in a level. I do think a simple improvement would be to have an arrow pointing to the nearest lantern, but other than that, the interface is functional and the game is fun. I particularly wanted to shout out the art style, which is able to convey the scene efficiently and stylistically. It brings to mind the pixel horror games by Airdorf, like Faith, The Wind, and Extraordinary. While there were many games that used the idea of dynamic lighting or gravity manipulation, I only saw one game where the main mechanic was decapitation. Heads Gone by Jake Benbow. Heads Gone is a puzzle game where you launch your head off of your body to flip switches or sneak into small areas, all while playing as an earth-toned William Afton. Heads Gone feels like it took some inspiration from Decap Attack, but maintains its own identity despite using such a specific premise. Tight physics and a little bit of screen shake really tie this entry together. Obviously, I was barely able to scratch the surface of the sheer volume of entries for the jam, and I'd be interested in revisiting the jam and doing a follow-up. Let me know in the comments if there were any games that stood out to you in the jam, or any upcoming jams that seem interesting. Check out my other videos and subscribe to keep up to date with my ramblings.